folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. The last two sequels of the Back to the Future trilogy that I'm going to review will put on hold for a little while because I'm going to review that one favorite that I like um, that's based on a popular Swedish uh, children's book by Astrid Lundgren, which is called The New Adventures of Pippi Longstocking. That's right from July 29, 1988 when this movie came out. This is the American version and of course it has Tammy Irwin playing the the spunky redhead pigtail um, character who's more unconventional, assertive and has superhuman strength and she hangs out with her sidekick monkey yeah, you know, sometimes she dresses up as a pirate, you know, coming from her uh, her father, who's a pirate as well, and he's, and she hangs out with two kids, Tommy and Anika, so they go out on their wild adventures together, <laughs> which is cool. And this is, of course, um, the book I actually grew up with. I used to read this book when I was very young. It was always fun having to to learn on. On what Pippi can do. Not to mention, I, I used to watch all four of these films with the original actress from Sweden named Ingar Nielsen. They were all dubbed in English, by the way. It aired on KTLA Channel 5 in Los Angeles. That's part of the Family Film Festival with uh, Tom Haddon. Now, for those who are from Southern California, will know who Tom Haddon is. Because he used to be the host of the TV show Popeye. Yeah, it was very popular back then. I actually remember him drawing a, uh, a picture of a Popeye and, and all the rest of the characters too. So he knows actually how to do it. <laughs> Should be an animator by the way. But he was great. Now I know Tammy Irwin is already going to be turning 41 this week. In fact her birthday is on Wednesday. This Wednesday. So <laughs> So this is actually a happy birthday gift to her. I know this movie wasn't well received when it came out in theaters. Had a lot of negative reviews from critics. And not only that, they voted uh, Worst Actress for Tammy Orwin on the Golden Raspberry Awards, simply known as the Ratsies. So, yeah. <laughs> but you know what? I thought she did a great job playing the role. She may not be Ingar Nielsen, but it's a start. I mean, she was already in her preteen years, so I think maybe they wanted to have a, a follow-up towards it. And it makes sense. I mean, maybe they did want a follow-up. And because, you know, it, it was very popular in Sweden, and it, it became very popular everywhere. So why not? You know, and I thought she looked great, you know, when, when she started playing the role, and yeah, she does look exactly almost in the spirit of what Pippi Longstock is supposed to be. You know, with pigtails, redhead, with, with freckles along. Yeah, just like the Wendy's uh, picture that you saw in you know, the fast food restaurant, but, which I think that was based on as well. I mean, but you get the idea. But like I said, I, I thought she did a great job. I... I had to disagree with the critics this time around. I mean, I know it had 17% on Rotten Tomatoes. So, yeah, I, I had to defend this. I mean, this is actually very fun. I, I would love to watch this anytime, no matter what. And I know this is in full frame, the DVD that came out in 2000 by uh, Columbia Truster Home Entertainment, you know, owned by Sony. Uh, I know there's already an HD print of this movie that's available on, on many websites out there, including a website known as Budu, which is B-U-D-U, -U. Yeah. which actually shows this movie in HDX, so it's definitely in widescreen the way it was meant to be. I think they aired it on TV in HD, so hopefully... Someday Sony will release this on Blu-ray for the very first time since they just released uh, some other classics already such as My Girl and True Beverly Hills and already with Matilda too since they had a double feature with this uh, title. 
I, I just hope this one gets it. So either way, it's yeah, because I would like to see some new interviews, more extras, maybe see an, an interview with uh, Tammy Irwin. Because if if you ever see Tammy Irwin now, you'll never see her the same way again. Because between this movie and the way she looked now, she's really hot. I know. Because she's now a model and she does take a lot of pictures. She, I know she posted them on, on her website and you know, on the internet uh, and so on and so forth. Yeah. So <laughs> she even dresses up as Pippi Longstocking sometimes. You know, I saw a, a picture where she was wearing her costume, so I thought that was really cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But it's cool. So anyway, let's get to the film. It stars, once again, Tammy Irwin as Pippi Longstocking. With David Seaman, Corey Crow, Eileen Brennan, you know, the late great actor who was in the movie Private Benjamin and Clue. Dennis Dugan, who went on to direct a lot of Adam Sandler movies, as well as uh, Problem Child. Yeah, he also starred in comedies as well, and I know he was in Happy Gilmore with Adam Sandler. Yeah, he was great. Diane Hall, George D. Senso, J.D. Dickinson, Chubb Bailey, Dick Van Patten, who just recently passed away. A great actor who was in all these uh, Mel Brooks movies, including uh, High Anxiety and Spaceballs which I really love. Yeah, he was also in the TV show Just the Ten of Us. John Chuck, Branscom Richmond, Evan Adam, and Fade Matterson. And it's written and directed by Ken Anakin, the same guy who gave us a guilty pleasure called The Pirate Movie. The movie begins set on the sea where her father's ship is that's already being carried off by a huge storm. Suddenly we spotted a spunky red-headed uh, pigtails with freckles who's also the heroine named Pippi Longstocking who's played by Tammy Irwin who winds up being stranded with her horse named Afonso along with her monkey sidekick Mr. Nielsen. Well once they uh, finally went up ashore she wants up taking up a residence in an old family home which is called Villa Baculia. There was rumored that a lot of neighborhood kids had thought that this particular home is haunted. We soon meet the the Sequin family yeah named Mr. and Mrs. Segrin, all played by Dennis Dukin and Diane Hall, where we then actually meet uh, their kids, Tommy and Anika, who are both played by David Seaman and Corey Crow. So then they actually spotted uh, Pippi Longstocking, who was actually staying over there at, at the Villa Baculia, and they soon become the best of friends and get into a lot of great adventures together just like the series and the book yeah and that one memorable scene was when they started cleaning up the floor with uh, scrubbing shoes I know there was that scene where she was actually taking a bath yeah and then she started spinning around and dry not to mention she even does a backflip <laughs> at the end that was cool I know she did some of the stunts that she did in the movie. Even in the beginning is when her father catches uh, Pippi once she, she jumps and then lifts her up. You know, she does a flip in, in, the, in the air. And she hangs on top of the stem on in the flag. It was cool. Not only that, she uh, with Tommy and Anika, she also went on to do uh, some dodging splunks. You know, they, she even started swinging around into the river, you know, with the rope. And then they actually uh, wound up going down 
you know, in the river, actually singing the theme song to Pippi Longstock. It's coming to your town, so yeah, which I know they played it in the opening and in closing credits too. Yeah, it, it was sort of downplay, you know, as it turned out to be, but it's okay. I, I did like the theme song. As corny as it is, I, I thought it was cool. She also ran away in a homemade auto gyro. It's a huge plane that she came up with, you know, just flying around to the entire town. And, and she's also keeping the house from being demolished by crooks. Yeah, that also includes uh, Miss Bannister and all the rest. You know, it was, of course, Miss Bannister is played by Eileen Brennan. So, and of course, um, they started helping Pippi by not going into the foster home which suddenly she wants up going later on in the movie. And the parents actually refused to let uh, let Tommy and Anika play with her. So yeah, that kind of sucks. So then, suddenly she wants up not being fit with the crowd that, and she's already missing her friends already, that, that suddenly she wants up in the foster home until that particular night she started saving everybody inside the home by a huge fire yeah so she actually wants up saving everybody in that home and by actually trying to um, trying to get them out of the window oh and that was one scary scene when I saw that when when she was trying to you know walk across just trying to uh, get everybody out of there but she did became a heroine and they decided that the foster home it's not for her to, to stay with. And she was now allowed to return to Billa Bakulia so she'll be able to stay and be friends with Tommy and, and Anika for a very long time. But of course she's also reunited um, with her father on Christmas Day and offers to have a chance to become a cannibal princess since she was already washed ashore on an uncharted island where he was now crowned a king when they actually prepared to leave. Um, only problem is Tommy and Nika started feeling very sad so they thought maybe one more time Pippi can actually uh, come by and, and meet uh, and stay over there for, for as long as she wants. So yes, her father actually allowed her to do that. So then the movie ends where you basically just see, you know, a lot of footages from the movie into the end credits and then it cuts to a, a picture of uh, Pippi wearing a, a dress and a brunette. Yeah, that was part of the, the sequence. So that, I thought that was cute. And yeah, I really enjoy this movie actually. It's, it's actually very fun, exciting, a lot of great adventures. It's just like the Swedish version that I've seen on TV when it aired on KTLA and I know they have it on DVD already all four of these movies along with the TV series so I'll probably get these later but for now I, I'm just glad I watched this and it was cute you know I was surprised that this movie uh, wound up being released on many countries that follows in 13 languages so you definitely see what what the movie was all about I mean Basically, what it is, you know, Pippi actually going on on their latest adventures with Tommy and Nanika, and it's yeah, and they do a lot of good stuff together. So that's what makes this movie and the TV series and the book a lot of fun and very imaginative and and also um, very educational too. <laughs> yeah, I actually learned a lot from Pippi. They also had a 1997 animated film that followed after this and it was actually pretty cute because it later became a TV series um, that aired on TV. Yeah, it was actually done in Canada by the company that, that did a lot, of, a lot of shows and everything by Novana Animation Studio. But yeah, um, nothing else to say. It was kind of interesting to see Dennis Dugan you know, playing the father in this movie, along with Dick Van Patten, as Greg the Glue Man. Yeah, because I like that scene where he started uh, creating his own glue and everything. <laughs> and all. 
Yeah, he was, he was such a great guy. I, I, I miss him already. Eileen Brennan, who played Miss Bannister, was also great in the film. I know she was going to go after Pippi and they wanted her to stay in the foster home and all that. I know there was that famous scene where Pippi actually started to grab her and she started to do a lot of you know, crazy things to her you know, just to get rid of her. And I know she was going after those crooks too. That was, that was going to kidnap her. Yeah. And I like all the scenes that she was doing in the movie. Yeah, there was even that scene where she started eating the cake <laughs> uh, with her mouth. Uh, <laughs> oh man, because with all that super strength that she has, she could do everything. <laughs> yeah, a, a lot. You know, a lot of that stuff. <laughs> yeah. It's such a fun movie. I, I, I thought Tammy Irwin did a good job. I mean, there's no doubt about it. I mean, it doesn't matter who, which actress who plays the role. You know, she she was as good as she was. So I had to disagree with what everybody says. Um, it's no wonder she's being best known for for that role. But she actually did do something for a while after the movie Pippi Longstocking. So I think she did do some some TV shows and movies for a little while. She still uh, dresses up as her at times. You know, that's so cool. I think she did some of her stunts in the movie. I, mean, I know that he's a stunt double, but I think some of the stunts she had done maybe from her. Because I did found out on her bio that she did start taking gymnastics and all this other stuff that she's been doing, so I figured she's, she's more athletic. So I think she did some of those scenes just for that. But either way, you know, it was, it was perfect. And if this movie ever comes out on Blu-ray, uh, I really hope I get to see a new interview with her. I think that'd be really cool. Maybe all this other stuff that needs to be included. Maybe some TV spots, some trailers. Who knows, you know, if we get to see that. Yep, she's looking beautiful and better than ever. <laughs> if you haven't seen this movie, and even if you love Pippi Longstocking, especially all the uh, Swedish versions, Definitely check this out. I don't think it's not as bad as you think. It's it's actually pretty fun and cute. I, I think you're going to enjoy it. I mean, if you get a chance. I know I will. So, <laughs> there you have it. It's a new... So, there's, so there you have it. The New Avengers of Pippi Longstocking. And I give this movie three and a half stars. I'm Joseph A. Saboro, and I'll see you later. Bye.